Hey y'all, so uh, got a 2000, I don't even know what year this boat is, 2002, 2004, custom weld uh, Viper 2 with a Kodiak 350 motor and an American Turbine SD 312. So I was looking on the internet for some guidance on checking the impeller. I've sucked a lot of rock through this unit over the years, learning how to navigate the river. And this is the first time I pulled it apart. I've noticed it's low on power. Uh, it's slower to come out of the hole. I got under pulled the grate and by hand filed the impeller because it had a bunch of rock gashes on the leading edge. And obviously it was creating a lot of turbulence just because you got when you got nicks in there, it's going to create a turbulent. And then you're just creating air pockets and losing power. So it's to the point where I need to pull it out. So I, I couldn't find an instructional video. Uh, so I'll just go through this I don't think I know what I'm doing yet but I'll document as I go and I can correct it at the end so first thing I did I, I pulled the cup off pulled the bowl off that's all pretty easy just you know take the nuts off the studs and <clears throat> that's only sealed by an o-ring back here so you just take a soft mallet loosen it up shouldn't have to apply any heat unless you got a lot of corrosion so you get to this point uh, there's a custom pooler you can order for 200 bucks I'm gonna try and do this with uh, a three jaw, I know it's explicitly stated not to do that because you can break the impeller. Uh, I bought a, a three jaw that had really wide flanges, so I'm hoping it's gonna work. I basically bought it just for this, for you know, 40 bucks versus the $200 part. Um, and if I screw up this impeller, I'm probably gonna buy a new one anyway. I think I'm looking at going with a stainless impeller because this one's pretty trashed and by the time I spend money getting this one cleaned up, um, it just, it doesn't look real smooth. If you're, you know, any kind of familiar with aerodynamics or hydrodynamics, it just looks like it's not a very efficient casting. Uh, anyway, one thing you gotta check is play. And I'm, again, not sure I'm doing this right, but oops. this thing seems to have a lot of play between the impeller and the wear ring. And so it's supposed to be, I think, between 24 and 26 thou. So I played around with it. Uh, I can get 40 thou in there, and that basically takes the play out of it. I guess I don't have it in there right, but you know, just trust me, it's hard to do it while I'm filming, but I played with it, so 40 thousandths is way too much. I don't know what it takes to shim this thing, so next step is just pull it apart. I just wanted to get a gauge reading on it before I pull it off. So if it doesn't pull off easy, I'll put a little heat on here and uh, let you know how that goes. Okay, so the puller I bought was about a half an inch too short to reach from the shaft down to the where you clamp on. But uh, my neighbor down the street had a two jaw puller, and I'm sorry I didn't film it, but uh, we were just talking, and then I sent him on his way with his tools. So basically, just put the two jaw puller on here. I didn't have to add heat or nothing. I was just really gentle to it, and that thing just slid right off. So um, inside here, there's a keyway. So I already pulled the key out. There's a keyway, pull the keyway out. And then these, I'm assuming, are the shims where you can make your adjustment. So I had, I didn't even measure that. It looks like about a 30 thousandths or 40 thousandths shim. And then I had these other real thin, like, I don't know, it's like one and three thousandths or something. So real thin shims. I just pulled those shims out, put it back on there, wiped it down with WD-40. The uh, impeller, sorry, special needs here. So once I wiped it down, put some WD on there, it went all the way in, seated. I was able to take a measurement and uh, I'm down to 24 thousandths, 25 thousandths right in there. So I'm gonna clean this impeller up, put it back together, take it for a rip. One thing I noticed it seems like this is where they remove material to balance the impeller, but that's also, I think that's where the wear ring rides, or not rides, but that's where the water's going by. So you would think that that's gonna create a water passage. So I, I don't know. I don't know nothing. I'm just gonna clean it up, put it back together. I was gonna order a stainless one, but I think I'll just, run this and see what it does see if the performance is good and that way i can save a little bit of money and just get back on the water 
Hope this helps somebody. I was struggling to figure this out. Um, I don't know if this wear ring needed to get replaced. You'd need a special puller. There is a little gap in there, so you you'd probably get a little mini slide hammer in there and work that out. But this wear ring looks like it's in good shape, I'm assuming. And I don't see any contact, so... Uh, if you see something that I don't, let me know. I mean, I, there's this little ring here, but I don't know if that's... That might have been the way that thing was machined. I don't know. Could have been a piece of junk that got caught in there. You know something, please tell me, because I don't know nothing. Just trying to learn. And this is uh, 81 Alpha. It's the only part number I see on there. Um, yeah. So I'm going to clean up these leading edges. You can see I already got in there with a file just through the grate. But... Uh, it ain't perfect. Okay, mumbling, rambling, bye. Okay, so I decided to give it a go and clean this thing up. It uh, didn't look terrible after I got into it. So I hit it with the grinder. I got a 60 grit on there, a little bit of hand file. I tried a Dremel, just trying to get both sides, knock out all the imperfections and dings from rocks. And then I hit it with some emery cloth. I don't know what that is, probably 120 grit or 200 grit or something. And what I noticed is the, the surface was really rough. So I don't know if that's from corrosion over time or if they never put these in a tumbler. It's got some roughness from the casting. So it kind of easily knocked all that surface down. So it's a lot smoother. Um, these leading edges are not quite knife sharp, but you know, you could definitely cut your finger on it if you pushed hard enough. And then on the trailing edges, I don't know why those need to be sharp, but they were pretty sharp from before. So I just kind of cleaned it up and I'm going to throw it back in and see what it does. So yeah, I'm hoping I save myself a couple grand here. Uh, again, I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So I don't think I took off enough material to impact the balance. So uh, I guess I have to throw it back in the river, take it for a spin, and let you know how it runs. But uh, it looks pretty good. I'd say it's, it's better than it ever was since I've had the boat. Uh, again, hope this is helping somebody. All right. Well, I dug a little deeper. Now I'm into the, the bowl here. So this is what the... I don't even know if this matters. But I'm just going through and cleaning up these leading edges so you know your velocity is a lot slower in here I guess I don't know nothing about how important it is to have these leading edges clean but to me anywhere you can reduce resistance it's going to help you out so I'd be surprised if you can't send these out and get them polished but uh, I'm just cleaning up the leading edges I cleaned up where the seal surface is and I'll uh there's a little bit of corrosion in here, so I'll never seize all these. And hopefully using the right never seize, it doesn't react with aluminum. So anyway, I'm just showing you that I am cleaning up the bowl. And uh, not making it razor sharp because these are really kind of dull. It's a dull edge, so it's probably not that critical, but I'm definitely cleaning it up. Okay. More useless information.